Hello everyone, this is Craig Drennan. I'm an artist in Atlanta, Georgia. I also manage uh, an exhibition space called The End Project Space that I started in January 2019. And I was invited to curate an exhibition at Atlanta Contemporary, and the exhibition is called The End is Near. And that's, of course, has a couple meanings. One very literal, The End Project Space is very near downtown Atlanta. But the other meaning of the phrase would be like an old evangelical preacher saying that the end is near, like the, the Armageddon's coming. And I like uh, that meaning too. So the 11 artists in this show I brought together, uh, and thankfully they're all willing to participate. And they all have either had exhibitions or will have exhibitions at the end. And when I was deciding what works to select from each artist and deciding how to lay out the show, I had it in my head that that curved gallery at the Contemporary near the front entrance, uh, that curved gallery reminded me of a small church or a chapel. And so I thought, you know, I would use that as a basic template for how to lay out the show. So what I'm going to do while this loop is playing is I'm just going to talk about uh, the works by each of the artists and why I chose it. This is Joe Haddon's tank that you're looking at now. And it's a tank of chemicals and substances that he puts together and the, the substances harden until he can actually pull out a physical square object out of the tank and then exhibit it on the wall, uh, you know, if, if he feels like it as a discrete work of art. And I wanted Joe's piece to, to be right in the front uh, part of the exhibition because in, in my mind that was going to be the baptism tank. Uh, and so I sort of, you know, in, in keeping with my thinking, I was going to have Joe's piece right up front. Uh, so you see that right away when you walk in and you, you know, have lots of questions about what's in the tank. Um, as you sort of move through to the uh, left on the walls, uh, up high you probably saw the tires uh, as the camera was panning around. And those two tires with the blue squares behind them are by the artist uh, Namwon Choi. And the tires are actually cast fiberglass with marble dust. And she had exhibited them once before as a freestanding floor sculpture. But I was curious what they look like on the wall with her trademark ultramarine blue behind them. And to me, these tires behave like windows, like circular windows in a church or a rose window in a, in, you know, in a cathedral or some small regional church. And I liked how something low and humble like the tire suddenly seemed light and pale and angelic, um, you know, in this uh, presentation. So that was interesting to me. And then right below the tires, uh, which you're looking at now, um, there's a peephole drilled straight into the wall by artist uh, Marissa Graciano, who is, uh, was raised in Atlanta but is now based in Brooklyn. Nam Wan Choi, by the way, is in Savannah, and Joe Haddon is based in Atlanta. Uh, but Marissa Graciano's peephole is consistent with her work because she does painting but also does installation and performance and video and a lot of her work deals with uh, public space versus private space and the degree to which uh, viewer behavior uh, becomes part of, of the actual uh, artistic experience. So we drilled a hole right through the wall and you can see into the back offices at Atlantic Contemporary and so to me that uh, that function, that peephole functioned you know, in every way that Marissa wanted, but it also seemed like a confessional to me when people would walk up to it slowly one at a time and sort of look in and try to have some experience with, you know, what's behind the wall. Um, straight below the tires and the peephole, you'll see some graphite drawing on the wall. I think it's the first piece shown uh, when the video loop starts. And uh, that graphite is by Emily Tomlinson. And Emily uh, started a wall drawing. She's known for doing these, uh, now you can see it. She's known for doing these really immersive graphite drawing installations. 
And for this show, she um, was going to make a band of graphite around the perimeter of the whole space, 30 inches from the floor all the way around. And she planned on working on it uh, during uh, opening hours at Atlanta Contemporary. Unfortunately, we had our opening reception on March 12th, and the very next day, the Atlanta Contemporary was closed to the public. So we haven't been able to go back in, and therefore Emily has not been able to go in and continue drawing. But as soon as it's open again, uh, she'll go back, and uh, because of that, you'll be able to go back you know, multiple times, and the show will always look a little different because Emily's drawing will be bigger every time you go. Uh, and Joe Haddon's tanks will be changing every time you go, you know, and so on. Um, beside the tires and the peephole and the beginnings of the graphite wall drawing, you see a couple framed ink drawings. Now, now you can just start to see them uh, by Case Cheatham, who's an artist uh, based in Atlanta, uh, who I knew way back in the old days in New York. There you get a image of Case's work. Um, and I really wanted those two drawings to be in because they're the most narrative works in the whole exhibition. And they really, to me, seem like they're, they're earnestly trying to tell a story about the outside world. And I like, I like that, sort of how Giotto's, you know, Arena Chapel paintings, you know, are trying to tell you something that happened outside, maybe previously. And that was really interesting to me. Um, right beside Case's two pieces, which you can see here again, um, I had two uh, small prints that are framed by an artist named Avantika Bawa, who is based out of Portland, Oregon, but lived in Georgia for many years, uh, including Atlanta. And there you can see the two prints, with the, one with a black triangle and the other with a red triangle. And I liked how abstract these were, and I really wanted them to be in the corner. Um, and, and both of these prints are uh, based on a, uh, a building, a single building that uh, Bawa's been drawing and painting and making prints about uh, for several years now, a building in, uh, in Portland, Oregon. And so I wanted those in the corner so they could really anchor it like a Russian icon or like, uh, you know, a Malievich painting, you know, which he liked to install near the corners of rooms. Right next to Vanta Gabawa's pieces, you see the upright podium with the suitcase at the bottom and the light, um, and the photograph on the wall. That's by Courtney McClellan. And Courtney uh, did live in Georgia for several years, uh, including Atlanta, Georgia, but uh, she's now in Michigan doing a visiting artist gig. But this is a teleprompter piece that she made. And I really wanted the teleprompter to be in the center of the back wall and really be the focal point. So you look over top of Joe Haddon's tank and you see Courtney McClellan's podium because I wanted that to be uh, where the clergy would stand, presumably, if this were a church. So the rabbi, the priest, the preacher, whoever it is, would stand back there. Uh, and I like the idea that it's a teleprompter, so it's not their own words, that they're getting words from you know some other you know, mystical source, presumably. Uh, and then the photograph that uh, Courtney had of the auditorium seats was also interesting to me because in this context, I think it functions almost like a mirror reflecting out the, the seats that would be, you know, presumably in the church. Uh, here, you'll get a look at it again. Uh, so that was interesting to me. You'll notice straight above the podium, it's one of Joe Haddon's uh, synthetic objects pulled out of a tank. But right to the, uh, the upper right, uh, which you'll see here hopefully in a, in a minute, there it is. This irregularly shaped drawing that's right above to the right of, of the teleprompter is by an artist named Evie Sala. And it's a little deceptive because the original drawing is made with ballpoint pen. And then she has a process where she scans it enlarges it, prints it, mounts it on a different material, and cuts around the wood to make the shape. And uh, if you get up close on this, you'll see what looks like uh, human fingers and serpents, 
which uh, to me was interesting because that seemed like a reference to uh, snake handling or the handling of serpents, which I encourage all listeners to uh, give a try just in case you have, you know, the power. Um, what you'll also see right beside uh, Evie's piece, we'll wait for it to pan around, but there are two small paintings that have um, large gestural uh Brush strokes with drips behind them directly on the wall. And those are by Trey Roselle. And one of uh, the pieces has um, sort of a golden yellow drip, and the other has a blue drip. And I was interested in those pieces because, um, on the one hand, drawing, or I'm sorry, painting directly on the wall seemed a lot like the old fresco that you might see in a chapel. Here come Trey's pieces. There you go. There's Evie up high, and there's Trey Rizal. And so I like these pieces because, again, I say it returned to sort of fresco-like wall painting, but also the images in the two paintings uh, seem to resemble windows. And so I liked having two windows on this side of the gallery to uh, counteract the, the window effect of the two tires on the opposite side. So it, it was, you know, multifold. I was happy to have those pieces, you know, for a lot of reasons, but the placement of them really was to kind of balance out what I was calling the windows in the space. Down on the floor, you can see some vertical uh, shapes sticking up uh, periodically throughout the show. And those are by uh, Sergio Suarez, uh, an artist based in Atlanta. Uh, Trey Rizal also in Atlanta. Evie Sala also in Atlanta. Uh, Sergio is originally from Mexico, but has been working in Atlanta for a few years now. Um, known primarily for uh, printmaking and painting, but now with these sculptures, they stand freely in the middle of the room, and they have an interesting function, because on the one hand, they're almost like exclamation points, uh, kind of increasing the intensity of what's happening in the room, just like a regular exclamation point would. Here you, can, here you can see some of those sculptures. You'll notice the carving and the color uh, on those uh, because the second function they have is they also resemble fire, or they're meant to, to represent fire. And I like the idea a great deal of fire kind of smoldering around the floor of this exhibition space with its, you know, all of its uh, apocalyptic reference to the end times and, and so on. Um, these pieces by Sergio also have the capacity to be moved. And so throughout the exhibition, um, I was very open to the idea of maybe moving them around. So again, uh, if you go back and see the show multiple times, once it opens, then you know the configuration could be a little different each time, just like the fire keeps moving from spot to spot. And that was interesting um, to have yet another type of work that could be very flexible during the run of the exhibition. The last piece, and I really did want this to be the last piece in the show, if you start left and then turn your head and look at you know, the, the last piece on the right, is by artist uh, Kojo Griffin, uh, who's had a long exhibition record, but um, hasn't shown quite as uh, frequently in recent years, but he, I did ask him to have a solo show at the end, which he had um, last fall. And once we uh, come around to his piece, he's been making these works on paper based on Mad Libs, that sort of improvisational um, children's game or, you know, middle school game. And uh, these pieces are really interesting to me. And I wanted to place Kojo's piece high on the wall because to me it almost seemed like uh, it would serve as like the church uh, bill, uh, bulletin board you know, like the last thing you see before you exit. And so there it is, right above, yeah, there you see it on the right. And so that was interesting to me, to put Kojo's piece uh, high on the wall. Uh, there's a second piece by Kojo that's tucked away uh, in the director's office. Uh, so general public isn't gonna have access to that, but maybe, maybe if you ask nicely, uh, the director might let you take a look at it. Um, so those are the 11 artists in the show, and I was extremely happy with the work that they presented. And I want to thank uh, Atlanta Contemporary for giving us the opportunity. I want to thank um, all the people who helped me, including Ethan Cantrell, who made this video possible. 
Come and see the show. It's extended through the end of July. Thank you very much.